The U-Series mobile processors have been neglected by many PC brands, which is interesting as that's what Intel NUX used for over a decade. The ultra low power CPUs from AMD and Intel provide great power efficiency and are easier to cool, which in turn makes it easier to keep fan noise down in such a small box. And as many of you know, I'm all about the quiet minis. Oh yeah. Thankfully, Geekom is one of the few brands to return to the U-Series with the A5 Mini PC, featuring AMD's Ryzen 7430U. A processor we haven't looked at yet, which always makes me happy. The 7430U is 6 cores, 12 threads, still on Zen 3 architecture, and uses the ancient Radeon Vega graphics. Actually, after looking into it further, the 7430U is just a refresh of the 5625U, with a new name. So my first thought was, well, GPU drivers are dead like on the 5825U, right? Or any other 5000 series and below CPUs. But nope, AMD apparently continues to support this Vega graphics chips with new drivers, not because of its architecture, but because of its release date. What is it they call this kind of malpractice? All oh, right, planned obsolescence. But don't worry, I doubt they're putting in too much effort. Baldur's Gate 3 crashes with the newest driver, just as it did with the 5000 series. Nice job, AMD. Geekom's A5 looks very similar to a NUC 12 and 13 Pro unit, mimicking its plastic design closely with a metal plate underneath. The A5 has a unique color to it, which I don't particularly like, but whatever. Other things about it are more important. One thing I was happy with when Geekom gave me the info on the A5 is that the price is under 300 US dollars for the 16 gigabyte RAM 512GB SSD configuration. With a 5% off coupon they've provided, you can get it for 265 US dollars on their website, and it might even be lower on Amazon as it was at the time of this review. That's a decent launch price for this mini, especially when you take into account that it's one of the few that comes with a 3 year warranty. So from initial impressions, we're off to a good start. But what else is included? Well, there's a compact barrel jack power supply, HDMI, visimount, and screws. The front has a couple of USB 3 10 gigabit ports, along with a 3.5 mm audio jack. The left side has a full size SD card reader, always a nice bonus. Inside it is a Realtek 8852BE Wi-Fi 6 card, which also provides Bluetooth. On the back are two USB-C 10 gigabit ports, both which support display out, but they don't support power delivery, which is a missed opportunity. That means no one USB-C cable solution. There's also a couple of HDMI 2.0 ports, which combined with the USB-C allows for a total of four displays up to 4K 60Hz. For wide networking, there's Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, and last but not least, another USB 3 10 gigabit and USB 2. One thing I always liked about Intel NUX was how easy they were to open. And many mini PCs still get this wrong today over a decade later. But not the A5. Loosen the four screws, pull on it, and you're in. Just watch out for the SATA ribbon cable. So what's cool here is that this mini supports a 2.5 inch SATA drive and a 2242 M.2 SATA for further expansion. That's three storage drives, along with the included 2280 Gen 3 NVMe. Underneath that SSD is the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Geekom has included two sticks of DDR4-3200, which is good news, as iGPU performance will be running as it should be in dual channel mode. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed on the A5, and is malware and rootkit free. I also tried Ubuntu, and worked fine. Alright then. Benchmark time. The closest CPU we have in the constantly updated benchmark list is the 5825U, which is the better 8 cores 16 thread chip. Both minis are around the same price, and the lowest priced on this list. Geekom's A5 is pretty close to matching it in Cinebench single core, and in multi core, the 5825U takes an easy win. The A5 is closer to Intel's 150U until we increase the power limit in the BIOS, and then it creeps up to the i3-1220p. Geekbench doesn't show a different result in single core, with a 7430U in last place. But in multi-core, the A5 is matching Intel's i3-1220p in last place.
Interestingly, increasing the power limit didn't result in a better score. The A5 does better in H.264 video encoding, beating a couple of Intel minis, but the two extra cores on the 5825U scale well and have it ahead by a substantial margin. When increasing the power limit, the A5 manages to climb another spot, beating out Intel's 150U. Switching to the AV1 codec, and the A5 doesn't impress, falling into last place. After increasing the power limit, it matches the i3 1220p. Now testing a CPU AI workload, no surprise again, it's at the bottom of the list. Increasing the power limit didn't change the score. The A5 does better with a GPU AI test, beating the flagship Intel minis of a couple of generations ago in everything except single precision. Again, no gain for this workload with the increased power limit. 3D Mark's Firestrike tests DX11 performance, and here the A5 is close to the 5825U. The higher power limit saw a consistent, very slight improvement in 3D Mark GPU tests, so I'm including it as well. The A5 does worse in DX12 Time Spy, dropping down the list. And in the more modern Steel Nomad Lite DX12 benchmark, it matches the 5825U. Not bad at all. Increasing the power limit saw around a 2.5% improvement in GPU performance. Okay then, so how does the A5 perform side by side with the 5825U? Let's have a look and note that the A5 is running with its higher power limit. There's not a lot of difference in Valorant between the two on the average frame rate, but the 1% low is much better on the 5825U Mini. Dota 2 shows a bigger win for the 5825U. This game is heavily bottlenecked and hasn't hit 99% GPU utilization with any mini yet. There's another big drop in frame rate with Counter Strike 2. And it's a similar case with League of Legends with GPU utilization being low. Cyberpunk 2077 may look like a close match, but at frame rates this low, the 5825U is still performing 12.5% better. Grand Theft Auto 5 is pretty close. Same with Wii U emulation. and PS3 emulation. So overall, a pretty good showing for the A5. Unfortunately, this mini fails the audio latency tests with Cinebench running in the background. It's not thermal throttling, so it's another issue I can't pinpoint. I was curious if the 7430U can handle 4K video editing with Adobe Premiere, and it does surprisingly well. There are some stutters here and there, but I think it's doable if you're on a strict budget. Geekom's SSD of choice is an okay performing Gen 3 drive according to 3 d Mark storage benchmark. As you'd expect, most Gen 4 drives beat it in the tests. When we opened the Mini, we saw a thermal pad on the SSD connected to the metal plate, which is used as the heatsink. And this was something Intel came up with a while back and works exceptionally well. The SSD temp is kept low, even when thrashed for half an hour. Geekom Minis have had issues in the past with Bluetooth range, but the A5 is the best performer yet at 9 meters or almost 30 feet. Wireless range is also fine, tested with the 5G band at 12 meters or 39 feet. No connection issues were reported by the Valorant client when playing a full game. The A5 has very impressive idle power draw from the wall, taking the top spot at just 6 watts. And the maximum power draw is very low at just 43 watts. Increasing the power limit only added an extra 4 watts. When we compare that to the 70 watts for the performance coming from the 5825U, this mini has better efficiency. After seeing the maximum power draw, it's not surprising to see the maximum CPU temp, the lowest in this lineup, hitting a maximum of just above 70C. Fan noise is also pretty low. It's not silent, but it didn't annoy, and that makes me happy.
Since mini PCs have been growing in size, the traditional NUC mini PC is now below average volume even with a 2.5 inch SATA slot. Mashing the delete key will get you into the BIOS. On the main page you can set the fan mode and power loss policy. The fan option should be called the power mode as it increases the power limit and performance as well. That's it for the BIOS. It's pretty bare bones. Geekom's A5 sure was an interesting mini PC to test. So let's go over the pros and cons. I'm happy to see another mini PC with a U-series CPU, even if it's a refresh. Cooling is good across the board. The A5 allows for three storage options, or four if you count the SD card. It's also nice to see an Intel NUC style three year warranty, which is much appreciated. However, no USB-C power delivery is included. The 7430U is just a 5625U with a new name, so it's still on older Zen 3 CPU and Vega graphics architectures. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the A5. I gravitate towards minis with good performance, cooling, low fan noise, and longer warranties. The Geekom A5 ticks those boxes at a decent price, and that's why it's my favorite Geekom mini PC. It reminds me of the B-Link Surf 5, which was a popular mini PC for good reason. Oh, and before you go, did you know Geekom also updated their Intel-based IT13 mini PC for 2025? It has some significant changes. We looked at its improvements in this video right here. Cheers!